Welcome back. It is time for our Q&A segment where we answer questions sent in from our viewers. This week, we're addressing an interesting one from Ben Halverson on TikTok. Ben asks, how did animals like koalas, penguins, and kangaroos make it all the way to Australia or Antarctica from where the ark landed? Thank you for your question, Ben. Um, Ben, we have to remember that the conditions after the fl flood were vastly different. Because of the plate tectonics that were going on or because of the tremendous amount of volcanism that was going on, uh, you had a lot of volcanic aerosols in the upper atmosphere. Those volcanic aerosols in the upper atmosphere are basically reflecting back the light from the sun before it can penetrate down to Earth. This started, uh, now this is theoretical, but it makes a lot of sense based on what we've studied within the scientific community, that it would have started a cooling cycle. And yes, there have been cooler portions of Earth's history. Many people call them ice ages, where uh, basically the, the ice caps on the northern and southern uh, poles would have started to move inwards. Well, as those ice caps grew, it would have dropped the levels of the oceans, revealing natural land bridges that already connect almost every continent together. If you drop the ocean levels just a bit, you can actually uh, have these natural ways that animals can reach other continents, other areas of the earth after they would have dispersed getting off of the ark. They're doing what they're supposed to do, uh, being fruitful, multiplying and replenishing the entire earth, right? Uh, so this would explain how those animals would have been able to make it over to those continents and then what they realized is that, hey, I'm fulfilling an ecological niche. Uh, this environment is really good for me. Maybe the environment back in Africa or back in Europe or wherever it might be is not as healthy for me. So the populations of those types of animals went extinct in those areas, but they began to thrive in the other places, let's say Australia. Now, there are a, a few little considerations. We have to remember that animals might have hopped on floating log mats. They may have been stuck on these floating logs after the flood as the flood waters are receding and those logs may have brought them to other areas. And you know, I'm not even so concerned about it when it comes to Australia because uh, the kangaroos, they could have just hopped over. <laughs> we love connecting with our thoughtful viewers like you. So remember to keep those questions coming Reach out to us on social media. You can uh, follow us at David Reeves Ministries on Facebook and Instagram and others. Be sure to send us an email at comments at genesisciencenetwork.com. We'll try to answer that on our next programs. Now, if you want to learn more about how the flood shaped our planet, I want you to check out this week's featured resource. That's right, flood by design. Receding water shapes the Earth's surface. This is by a friend, uh, Mike Ord, and Mike explores what geologists call the retreating stages of the flood, the seven month period where the waters receded, uh, carving out a lot of the landscapes that we see. Ord examines evidence that mainstream geology struggles to explain, like Unusual rock dispersals over hundreds of miles, the rapid carving of mountains and valleys, the formation of ocean basins and continents, and so much more. It's filled with photographs, it's got illustrations, easy to understand charts. Flood by Design is an excellent resource for high school students and adults alike. It offers a powerful, biblically based theory on how our world's geography actually came to be. Now you can find Flood by Design at the Creation Superstore by visiting creationsuperstore.com or you can call 931-212-7990. Pick up your copy today.